Good evening. Welcome to Daniel chapter 9, verse 20. And we're at one of these points in the Bible. Now, I'm in no rush. I'm not going to say, okay, we did Daniel 9 and we missed Daniel 9 to say we did Daniel 9. What I mean is, I've been in churches where the 30-minute Sunday school class, you do an entire chapter, and you didn't do the entire chapter. And I also need to give you a warning. What we're getting to now is a T-bone steak in Bible wisdom, understanding, and knowledge. This is something you're not going to understand if you just got saved. You're a newborn babe in Christ. This is something you're not going to understand if you're in a typical Baptist church where you don't learn nothing. You're not going to learn anything when you sit in a Baptist church and every Sunday morning the goats are getting fed and not the sheep. And then you might be in a Baptist church and I guess I'm not Catholics and all that. No, never mind that. You may get a man in a pulpit or a Sunday school class and he completely rejects what we're going to look at, what we're going to say. But I want you to be advised, I'm going to give you the scriptures. And you can pause to go in your Bible, find that place in scripture. You can pause for all the scriptures we look at. You can write them down. You're getting it on recording. He says, verse 20, we're not going to get far, but we'll, we'll get what we can do. And while I was speaking and praying, and we did that earlier part of chapter 9. It took us two times. Two nights. And confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel. I mean, if you want a revival, and let me be quick on this because I'll spend the whole night. If you want a revival in America, you better get to your sins and you better get to the sins of Americans. I'll tell you, number one on the list is pride. And presenting my supplications before the Lord, Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. My God. You're not going to get no revival. You're not going to get no prayer answered if it's not your God. For the holy mountain of my God. Now, we're going to read the Old Testament. This is Israel. This is Jewish. There is no church age. There are no Christians. There's no death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Yea, while I was speaking in prayer. So evidently, he's speaking out loud his prayer. You can do a silent prayer. You can speak out loud. He said, well, Stiley, you know, I'm in a public school system. and You know, I can't pray. Yes, you can. You're sitting at your desk, here's your books, and, and here's your assignment paper. You can pray. Boom. I just pray. And I, I don't think God heard the prayer. Cause, but I'm just saying, uh, you know, I, I'm sitting in the lunchroom, and I, I'm taking my lunch out. I just prayed. Well, I didn't hear you. You didn't make a big fuss. That's right. And while I was praying, to this, even this man, Gabriel, man, Gabriel, whom I've seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the even oblation, that would be about 6 p.m. Now, Gabriel, look at chapter 8. And some of you may, here he goes, he's going to go run all these chapter verses. Yeah. Chapter 8, verse 16, Gabriel. I heard a man's voice between the banks of the Uli, or however you want to say it, and said, Gabriel, make this man to understand the vision. So Gabriel is a man. Gabriel is his name. Gabriel can make and help you to understand. Luke. Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, 
verse number 19. Zacharias is in the holy place. His part is the incense of the prayers. And in the holy place, it says, verse 19, And the angel, man, angel, said, I am Gabriel, that stand in the presence of God, and sent to speak unto thee, and show thee these glad tidings. Glad tidings means good news. And it's not the good news that Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and rose again. It's the good news that this old man and this old woman are going to have a baby, John the Baptist. So Gabriel stands in the presence of God. He's an angel. He visits men and, and proclaims something, a message. Here he's given a birth announcement even before the conception. Okay? And chapter 1, verse, terrible writing, 1, not 25, 28, oh, angel. he said in another place, He's Gabriel to Mary. I can't find it. Luke chapter 1. All right, Luke 1, 26. Ooh, that's a terrible six. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel, angel Gabriel, was sent from God into a city of Galilee named, named Nazareth. And he goes about and tells Mary about the the virgin conceiving, the miracle conceiving, and the birth of the Messiah, and tells him to name him Jesus. Well, Gabriel told Zacharias, you're going to name your baby John. That's it. The two places in Daniel and the two places in Luke, you don't see anywhere else. It doesn't call him an archangel. The only archangel you get in the scriptures outside the Catholic Church teaching is Michael, and we'll see that later in Daniel, Lord willing. Hopefully the Lord will rapture us out of here and Daniel will take over this lesson. Back to Daniel 9. And if you're a Catholic, you just got flew off the handle. Because I just taught you something the Catholic Church doesn't teach. Nine twenty-one. It says, "Being caused to fly." You don't cause an airplane to fly. You start up the engines, you rev, and you get them going. And to cause to fly. It's like this. You're sitting on the side of a highway. And then here's traffic. They're going at the speed limit. And then this one car goes flying down the road. And you say, wow, that guy was flying. He didn't have no wings. Nowhere in the scriptures does it say angels have wings. That's a Catholic teaching, which a lot of Baptists do believe. And they're wrong. So when you die and you're absent from the body and present with the Lord or you're wrapped in, you're going to be, well, where's all the angels? Right there. Well, they're about 33-year-old males. Yeah, if you listen to Stolle and those who stood up for the King James Bible, you would know exactly what to wait for when you get to heaven. But you want to listen to idiots. Or as the CEV says, stupid And he informed me and talked with me. Whereby he's ent entertained angels unawares, Hebrew says. O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. 
Now, though he's mentioned three times, Daniel, Zacchaeus, and Mary, but four times in the scriptures, he seems to be an informant, seems to be a messenger. Now, will God, does God use that during the church age? I'm not going to limit God. Book of Hebrews. Yeah, but 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 what what's the title of the book? Is it Gentiles Church or is it Hebrews? Like Matthew. Who is it directed to? The church? Why isn't it called the church? Hebrews and Matthew and Acts are one of the three hardest books to teach. Oh, excuse me, allergies. And beginning of thy supplication and commandment came forth. I am come to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. How do you like that? How would you like an angel standing before God walk up to you without wings? Hey, Daniel, how you doing? And we don't even know if Daniel knows who this guy is. He's just a, he could be just a man. But being caused to fly, maybe Daniel saw it. Phew, man, look how quick you went. He comes up to Daniel and says, Greatly beloved. He didn't say, I'm proud of you. God's proud of you. He says, greatly beloved. Daniel is known in high places. Daniel, when he got up in the morning, he shook the gates of hell. Because look how the devil tried to get rid of him. Therefore, understand the matter. The visions, the prayer, and consider the vision. There it is. Okay, here we go. Now we got to do this slow. Seventy weeks. You heard of Daniel's 70th week. Seventy weeks. Not the 70th week. That's going to be a little bit later. The 70 weeks are determined upon the church in America. Am I quoting from a perverted Bible? I'll tell you in a moment. But that's not what it said. Determined upon thy people. Who's Daniel? He's a Jew. He's a Hebrew. He's of Israel. He's of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Thy people is Israel. Thy holy city. Well, your Baptists know the holy city. We're going to go and take a trip to the Holy Land. How come you call it Holy Land and not Holy City? Let me do a little search here. Huh? Holy Land. Let's see. If, you, if you're watching the video, you can see exactly what I'm doing. Holy Land. There's one verse. That Christ 2 12, the Lord shall inherit Judah, and his portion in the Holy Land shall choose Jerusalem again. That's the millennium. One place. All right, let's try this one. I love how you can watch this on the video. Holy City. That one's got 10 verses. I mean, you're going to say anything about the place, I'd say holy city, not holy land. you sure not holy with a bunch of Arabians. I, I, I talked to one guy, yeah, I went over there, and, and the guy, our, our, our uh, tour guy, he was, he was an Arabian. I said, Arabian is telling you about the Hebrew Bible, the King James? They hate the Jews. They got Catholics over there running around and as the tour guide. They hate the Bible. They hate Jesus. They hate God. So you got the, the Muslims and you got the Catholics running around showing you a bunch of crap that's not so, has nothing to do with the Bible. And you're going to say, oh, we went to the Holy Land. I got some property for you in the Bermuda Triangle if you want. Real cheap. Water rights and everything. To finish the transgression 
to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, and to bring in everlasting righteousness, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. Okay, that's a mouthful. That's what we're going to look at tonight. Now the 70 weeks of Daniel 9-2 The first year of the reign of, of yeah, the first year of his reign, Darius, verse one. I, Daniel, understood the books, plural, of the number of years, whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet. I only read certain books of the Bible. You got to read them all, all sixty-six. I don't do that, and that's why you miss out. That he would accomplish seventy years. In the desolations plural, of Jerusalem. So it's not just a 77 day week period. Okay? Because 924 that we read are years, not seven day weeks. It turns out to be years, and this is a biblical statement, which I know a lot of scholars out there, well, no, no, listen to them, wah, 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 wah. It is years, it is, quote, days of 70 weeks are prophecy. Each day is a year. Now, I'm going to do something that scholars don't do. Numbers. Uh, there he goes again. Other books of the Bible. Bible, 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 Bible. Numbers 1434. By the way, if you've got a modern Bible, it's not King James, you may not be able to follow this. If what I'm reading to you and you see on the screen doesn't match your Bible, your Bible's wrong, not mine. You need and must, must have a King James 1611 Bible or else you're holding a Bible of Satan. So look, look at this, Numbers 1434. After the number of the days in which he searched the land, even 40 days, when they sent the spies into Canish Barnea, they were in that land for 40 days. Remember they came back with the big, huge grapes. I would have. I wouldn't come back. If I was one of them spies, Moses say, well, well, man, we found him. He's over in a vineyard just sitting down enjoying one, one of these grapes. Did he say something to you? Yeah, he said to us, come on in. It's good. But, all joking on the side. 40 days. Each day day for a year. Got that? Shall ye bear your iniquities even 40 years? Why did Israel walk the wilderness for 40 years? Because the 40 days that they were in the promised land, and they came out, there's giants in the land. We're not going to win. We're just like grasshoppers. There's no victory. God brought us to death in the wilderness. God said, okay, those 40 days, has now turned into 40 years. That goes along with, with Jer Jeremiah. That goes along with Daniel. Now, if you think so, where two or three are gathered together in my name, and now the witness of the two or three witnesses shall it be established, let's go to the book of Ezekiel. And you will see all these tie in, Ezekiel 4, 6. And they make it one whole. That the Bible comes to be correct. That the Bible says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly dividing. And a proper Bible study is, you got to go to this book, to that book, to this book, to that chapter, to this verse. And unlike Harvard's book, where you go in the index, okay, I'm upset, into page 47, 
I got heartburn, page number 100. Uh, my wife is going to leave me, page 8. No. You got to have a concordance. You got to make notes. You got to highlight. Jeremiah said, Who has marked God's word? So Ezekiel 4 6, when thou hast accomplished this, lie again on thy right side, and thou shalt bear the iniquity in the house of Judah forty days. I have appointed thee each day for a year. Forty years. Now, if you only read the book of Ezekiel, you would miss out on Daniel. If you only read the book of Daniel, you'll miss out. If you don't read the book of Numbers, you miss out. you got to have it all together. You gotta realize in the Old Testament every chapter speaks about Jesus Christ. So God's one day you would have 70 weeks times seven days a week, you end up with 490 days. Daniel 9. Two. Nine, two. We barely got done with, with chapter nine. We're back to two. In the first year of his reign, Darius, Daniel understood the books of the numbers of the years. We're looking at we're looking at numbers, we're looking at years, like wow. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that it would be accomplished of 70 years of desolation of Jerusalem. Daniel the prophet prophesied the desolation of Jerusalem and he said it would be a certain period of number and Daniel sitting in, in, in Babylon, he's got a hold of the records, the scrolls of Jeremiah and he's reading them and God says, you see that? Yes. Oh! Okay. This is why Daniel's having all these visions and dreams and he's praying and it doesn't make sense and God gives him the book of Jeremiah and he's like, okay. Now, having been given the book of Jeremiah and not reading Jeremiah, how much would Daniel know? Zilch. That's the trouble with modern Christianity. They have a Bible. They, <coughs> they may have a King James Bible, but they don't open it. So, what we're looking at now, Jeremiah 25. We, believe me, we got much more numbers to do. Not tonight. Jeremiah 25, 11, and 12. And this whole land shall be made desolate. Nothing. Built. Garbage. Destroyed. Destruction. Fire. And astonishment. Oh my. How on earth did that happen? And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. There it is. And it shall come to pass when the 70 years are accomplished, done, finished, complete. I will punish the king of Babylon. And that nation, saith the Lord, for their iniquity. And the land of Chaldeans, it will make a perpetual desolation. Babylon today is nothing. It's a dead area. Chapter 29 of Jeremiah. Why didn't God put it on just in one big spot? He wants to know who's going to study, who's not going to study. And you're not going to get this out of your college, Baptist, universities, and colleges. You're going to have to go to a hole in the wall, background, primitive, <laughs> Ooh, those crazy Baptist people, those 
fundamental independent weirdos school like I did to get this. And the reason why your pastor teaches the, the deceptibility and the, and the foreignness and the destruction is because he's taking this and he said, like, I don't believe it. 29.10, For thus saith the Lord, that after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you and perform my good word toward you in causing you to return to this place. Okay, so Daniel is in Babylon. Daniel is in the 70 years. And when the 70 years is up, God's going to come. He's going to come to a king. We'll get to it later. Go back and, and do our study of Ezra and Nehemiah. The king's going to say, go to Jerusalem and rebuild that temple. Can I go back to Jerusalem and rebuild the walls? There it is. So you see, in Daniel, we have Jeremiah. We have Ezekiel. We have Ezra, we have Nehemiah. Now what happens is, why 70? During the reign of King Saul, he's the first king. 1096 BC, his reign began. There was no observance in his reign of the year of rest or the Sabbath year. The Jews go in captivity for 70 years because of what happened to King Saul. Well, why didn't it? Our long suffering God. God is long suffering, not willing, should, and he should perish. Now, see, now you tie the Old Testament to the New Testament. God did not want to send Saul and his sons to hell. They went on their own. Even though Saul was not God's choice. Now the Sabbath rest. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to go to Leviticus. What? Leviticus 25. A book that probably many Catholics have never opened. Never mind, read. I read the book of Leviticus at least once. As far as I know, from 2000. Plus, we've gone through Leviticus. I've, I've studied through Leviticus. I've got my doctorate through Leviticus. Leviticus 25, 2 through 4. Speak unto the children of Israel Hebrew and say unto when you come into the land the land of Israel never call Palestine which I give you take that message to the United Nations what's God have to say that land belongs to Israel then shall ye then shall the land keep a Sabbath unto the Lord this this is the seventh day. Oh, no, wait, 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 wait. Seven years thou shalt sow thy field. Okay? I mean, excuse me, six years thou shalt sow thy field. Six years I plant tomato seeds. And I grow tomatoes. Six years thou shalt prune thy vineyard, or tomatoes, and gather the fruit thereof. So that land, I go and get me a plot of land. I, for six years, I'm growing tomatoes in my land. I'm not a hate group. I'll give you an illustration. But the seventh year shall be a Sabbath. Do the seventh day Adventists do? Do they have a garden for six years and the seventh year they don't have a garden? How many Baptists know that there was a Sabbath of seven days? Yes. And there's a Sabbath of seven years. Grow your, grow your produce six years. Seventh year shall be a Sabbath rest of the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. 
You shall neither sow thy land nor prune thy vineyard. Let it go. How's that? None of this happened during the days or reign of Saul. Now we're going to keep reading. Now God promised the captivity a year for every Sabbath year missed or abandoned. Leviticus 26. Verse 34. You're going to go into captivity. The land, then shall the land enjoy her Sabbaths. Plural. The day that Jesus died was a high day. It was another Sabbath. It wasn't the seventh day Sabbath. Or what you idiot Baptists call Good Friday, which is a term from the Catholic Church. So you, you got your Baptist Catholics, which are wrong. Shall the land enjoy her Sabbath as long as it lieth desolate? So you know what's going on in, in Jerusalem and Judah while Daniel and, and Israel is in Babylon? The land saying, oh, this feels good. No plows. No pruning. No cutting. No seeding. Oh, let me lay down and rest. That's the land. Ye shall be in the enemy's land, Babylon. Even then shall the land rest and enjoy her Sabbath. All right, while you're in Babylon, that land is resting. Because you did not let it rest in the reign of Saul. As long as you as long as long as it lieth desolate, it shall rest. There's no one in the land. Because it did not rest in your Sabbath. You, didn't, you planted six years, but you never did the Sabbath rest. You did not plant six years. You did not have the seventh year as a rest. You did not plant the six years and have the seventh. All that during the reign of Saul. That did not happen. Now verse 43. 2643. The land also shall be left of them and shall enjoy her Sabbath. While she lies desolate without them, the people, they shall accept the punishment of their iniquity in Babylon, because even because they despise my judgments, Jeremiah, because their soul abhorred my statutes. Jeremiah. So God says in Leviticus 26, I am going to promise you if you do not keep the seventh year rest, Leviticus 25, I'm going to remove you off that land and that land will have its rest while you're gone. And thus so it was, Second Chronicles, Second Chronicles 36, 21. Scripture with Scripture. I have twisted nothing. Second Chronicles 36, 21. To fulfill the word of the Lord by the mouth of whom? Jeremiah. Unto the, uh, how many Baptists read Jeremiah? Until the land had enjoyed her Sabbaths, Leviticus 26, for as long as she lays desolate, Daniel and Babylon, keep its Sabbath to three score and ten years, there's that 70 again. So what you have is, You have 490 years from 1096 BC, the beginning reign of Saul. And Saul began his, his I mean, the, the beginning reign and the captivity of Daniel 1 1 was 806 BC. 70 times 7. Now back to Daniel 9.
924. I mean, this is hard. This is meat and potatoes. This is not those little biscuits you give to a teething child. This is not Gerber. And the problem with the Baptist churches today, all of the congregation are still on the breast, mother's milk, or they may be into the Gerber and Beechwood food. But they can't handle doctrine. They can't handle meat. And then Paul says, if, if you can't, if you can't grow into meat, you're carnal. And brother, that's the Baptist churches today. To a fact is many of them I call them Baptist Catholic. Because they got the S star, they got the Christmas, and they got the Good Friday. And that's Catholic. So Baptist Catholic carnality. So we have in Daniel 9.24. 70 weeks are determined on thy people. We just ran all the verses where that 70 came from. It's because of Saul. It's because not obeying the law. Determined upon thy people, thy people is Jewish. And there are people out there who apply this verse to the church. I'm not under the law. I can go out in the garden and grow tomatoes from, from the first day to the last day do I drop dead. I don't have no Sabbath year. I don't have no Sabbath week. I don't have any Sabbath day. Paul will mention, Thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not bear false witness, Thou shalt honor thy mother and father, but he never, he never says the Sabbath. And the Bible doesn't say Sunday either. Let me throw that in there. This is free, okay? Put this on your receipt, no charge. It never says Sunday, as a Baptist told me, it says the first day of the week. You know what the first day of the week, Jewish, not Roman Catholic calendar? The first day of the week of the Jewish calendar is called the first day of the week. Going all the way back to Genesis 1. And this in the morning, or I mean the evening in the morning was the first day. It wasn't Monday. It wasn't Sunday. It wasn't Tuesday. You know what your problem is when you're dating? This is all free. You know what your problem is when you're dating by the calendar? Our calendar is Catholic. It ain't Jewish. I don't think God goes by a Catholic calendar. I believe that. Okay. Back to what you paid for. And it says the city, the holy city, is Jerusalem. Again, a great error is taught by the seven-day Adventists. That this is the church age. Now, Jewish history. Jewish history runs 490 years. Now watch. We've got four periods. 490 years from the birth of Abraham to the exodus from Egypt. Not the book of Exodus, but when Israel left Egypt. Now you have to subtract 15 years from the birth of Ishmael to the birth of Isaac. You will have 490 years. God has nothing to do with Ishmael, the Arabians. So if you're going to go over to the Holy Land, and you're going to pay that Ishmaelite, that Arabian, to give you the, the tour of the Holy Land of a Bible they don't believe, you are a sucker. Especially more if you do it by a Catholic. <gasps> Number two, 490 years from the exodus from Egypt to Solomon's dedication of the temple. The temple's been built, Solomon's dedicating the temple. This does not include the rebellion and apostasy of Israel during the book of Judges. Erase that, and you've got 490 years. We're getting somewhere with this. 
We, in this 490 years, we got a period of time that we had to minus to get the 490 years that we've been looking at. Daniel's 70th week. 490 years of Solomon and his dedication to the decree to rebuild Jerusalem, not Ezra. Nehemiah. Ezra rebuilds the temple. Nehemiah rebuilds the city. Jerusalem. The 70 years of the Babylon captivity is not included in the 490. The fourth one, 490 years. And this is important. The next few nights. The 490 years between the decree to rebuild Jerusalem, not the temple, two different events, and the second advent of Jesus Christ, 490 years, now ready? Minus 2,000 plus or minus the church age. The church age is here, present now, but God's clock, God's calendar for the 490 years has stopped. There are periods in these 490 years where God says, all right, stop, don't count it. All right, get the clock going again. And that clock is not going to run again surely after the church has been raptured. Now, as soon as the church is raptured, or at the, at the beginning of the tribulation period, either one of those two points, that 490 years goes back in order, we're going to be looking at all these times, and dates, and years, and months. Now, and the reason for that one is the Jews rejected the Messiah. Now, to look at Daniel 9.24, and I look at the clock right now, let's see how much we got. Maybe. All right, what we're going to do is I'm going to stop right there. We're going to look at, we haven't done the 9.24 yet. We'll pick that up, Lord willing, tomorrow night. And we're going to break down 9.24. We broke down the, the 70 weeks, the 70 years, the 490. We got more to come. And I advise you to write down these passages. I advise you to pray over these passages. And say, Lord, God, I don't understand what he said. I want to understand. I want to believe. I want to do right. And Lord, I'm sorry I'm in a carnal church. I'm sorry I don't read my Bible enough. Lord, I say I read my Bible, but I don't read the 66 books. I don't like Leviticus. Numbers is too many numbers. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. And you're not going to get every word out of a modern Bible. You're going to get every word in a King James 1611 Bible. And you don't believe me on that. You go to our family website, look up the PowerPoint tab, and then you check out the Bibles. Working on the CEV right now. You check out how they subtract. They not only subtracted words, they subtracted verses. How would you like to have a recipe like that? How would you like to have your mother or your grandma, man, they got the, oh, man, their cookies are great. Wonderful, great cookies. And it's been handed, here is my daughter, here is my recipe for my cookies. And you get that recipe, and you look, one cup of, one cup of what? I don't know what one cup of. 
half a bag of chopped walnuts, okay? I know what that is. A teaspoon of salt. A bushel of... What? 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 A cup of what? A bushel. One blank raisins. How many raisins? One raisin? A cup of raisins? A tablespoon? What, what, what is... I can't make these cookies. I don't have a complete recipe file of my mom's cookies because there's missing things. And then you read two tablespoons of blue toilet water. What? Mom couldn't have done that. But modern Bibles do that. They add their own little thing in there. One teaspoon of rat poison, but rat poison may not may not kill you. The old authority says it kills you, but rest assured, it won't kill you. That's the modern Bible. If you want a recipe by God for what God is in Jesus Christ, it's the King James 1611 Bible. It has everything in there that God wanted you to have. I'm going to tell you, I believe not only King James only, but only King James. I go so far as to say those modern Bibles are of Satan. So Lord willing, tomorrow night we're going to pick up on 924. You're going to say, we didn't get anywhere. We got somewhere. We got very important information. That's not for every Christian. If you want to know, you've got to believe God. You've got to pray to God. You've got to read every word. And it's not going to take a year. It's not going to take two years. It's going to take a while. Listen, there are places in this Bible I still have a written question mark. God, what is that? He may answer it. He may never answer it. Maybe the day we get to heaven we get the answer. I don't know. But this is a plate of steak. Well, for me, pork. I love pork. I don't like steak. But for the average person, they like steak, onions, and mushrooms, and a salad, and a good root beer with, with, those, with those potato wedges, and whatever dessert you like. That's what we're in right now. And a lot of people love the book of Revelation. Revelation and Daniel go hand in hand with Jeremiah, with Ezekiel, with Numbers, with Deuteronomy, the whole Bible. So, Lord willing, I hope to see you tomorrow night. Hope things go well. To, uh, my health issues sometimes we, we can't do. But, Lord willing, God bless.